1 Corinthians chapter 15. Continued, 3 of 4. Parade of the Resurrection. So I want to join Paul, as he declares the resurrection. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept, 1 Corinthians 15 20. Christ is the first fruits. In the Old Testament they had the festival of first fruits, when they would bring the first sheaf of grain to the Lord. This meant that there would be more to come, otherwise it couldn't be the first fruits. The fulfillment of that is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He came back from the dead in a glorified body, and he is the only one who has come back from the dead, in a glorified body. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15 21-22 after the festival of the first fruits came Pentecost, which was 50 days later, that found its fulfillment in Pentecost in the New Testament, when the church began. But it will find its ultimate fulfillment when Christ comes for his own, and they shall all rise to meet him in the air, that will be the real Pentecost. A Pentecostal brother of mine said, You know, Brother McGee, I'm expecting a Pentecost. I shocked him when I said, I'm looking for Pentecost too. He said, Oh, you don't mean it, I said, I don't mean it like you mean it, you think you are going to repeat the day of Pentecost down here. The Pentecost I am waiting for is when the Lord Jesus comes to take his church out of his world. Christ is the first fruits. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's that is coming. 1 Corinthians 15 23. How wonderful that is. Christ is risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept meaning the sleep of death. For since by man came death, that man is Adam, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. In Adam all die, the proof that you are in the family of Adam, is that you are going to die, unless the Lord comes to take you in the rapture. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Jesus is the resurrection and the life, but every man in his own order. There is not a general resurrection day. It is interesting that the Reformers recovered a great deal of the truth of the Bible, but they didn't recover all of it. We are living in a day when there is much Bible study in the field of eschatology, that is, the doctrine of the last things, prophecy. It is a study of prophecy. In times when great truths are being recovered, one also finds a lot of heresy, and just plain nutty ideas. There is a lot of false teaching about prophecy, largely because of ignorance of the whole scope of Scripture. I firmly believe that the book of Revelation should not be taught, unless one has studied the other books of the Bible first. Prophecy is important, but it is not everything. The great reformers recovered much Bible truth, but they missed this teaching of the Bible, that every man will be raised in his own order, that there is not general resurrection day. Christ is the first fruits, and then afterward they that are Christ that is coming. What is he coming for? He is coming for his church, my friend. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, and all authority and power, 1 Corinthians 15 24. Then cometh the end, the end of what? The end of the age. How will the age end? There will come the great tribulation, and then there is going to be the millennial kingdom here on the earth. Satan will be released again for a little while, then he will be cast forever into the lake of fire, and the Lord Jesus Christ will establish His kingdom forever. That will be the eternal kingdom. Actually, the eternal kingdom is a further projection of the millennial kingdom, only the millennial kingdom will be a time of trial. Then cometh the end, when He shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. When will this take place? At the end of the millennial kingdom, Christ will put down all rule and all authority and power. For He must reign, till he hath put all enemies under his feet, 1 Corinthians 15 25. That is Satan. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, 1 Corinthians 15 26. I'll be glad when we get rid of that fellow, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him, 1 Corinthians 15 27. So Christ is not subject to God, but wait a minute, notice what the next verse says. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, 
Then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. 1 Corinthians 15 28. This means that when Christ has completed his millennial reign here upon this earth, and has established his eternal reign, I believe that he will turn over to David, his throne, or the earth, then he will return back to his place in the Godhead, where he was in the beginning, so that God may be all in all. Program and Pattern of the Resurrection Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? 1 Corinthians 15 29 What shall they do, that is, what shall they accomplish? We have already learned, that the word baptize means identification with someone or something. In this case Paul is speaking of identification as a dead person. He asks, what shall they accomplish which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then identified as the dead? This does not imply that the Corinthian believers were being baptized for their dead relatives or friends. It means that they were baptized or identified with Christ Jesus, who had died for them, and he was now risen from the dead. They were dead to the world but were alive to Christ, and why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily, 1 Corinthians 15 30-31. Paul is saying that if Christ be not raised from the dead, then they are foolish to put their lives in danger. However, since Christ is raised from the dead, believers are identified with him. As Paul said to the believers at Rome, Know ye not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, Romans 6 3-4. We are joined to a resurrected, living Christ. Now if Christ was not resurrected, then, Paul says, I am foolish to make the sacrifices I have made down here, my life stands in jeopardy every hour, I am constantly in danger of death. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me, if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die, 1 Corinthians 15 32. Paul asks, why should I be put in a lion's cage for my faith in Christ, if Christ did not rise from the dead? I am identified, I am baptized, into his death. I am identified as a dead man, because I am joined to a living Christ. Being identified with Christ in his death and resurrection is a tremendous fact. Let's not reduce it to some little water baptismal service that would be meaningless. If Christ is not risen, and if the dead will not be resurrected, then we might as well adopt the hedonistic philosophy of the Epicureans who say, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness, and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God, I speak this to your shame, 1 Corinthians 15 33-34. The Corinthian believers were being deceived by those who questioned the resurrection. They were listening to those who had plenty to say but no knowledge of God. Paul is saying that if they get the wrong information, they will act wrong. He admonishes them to stop sinning, because there will be a resurrection. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? 1 Corinthians 15:35. Paul will answer two questions, the how and the what. Men fail to distinguish the difference between the resurrection of the body, and the immortality of the soul. Plato and Cicero argued for the immortality of the soul. Paul is arguing for the resurrection of the body. The Sadducees denied any resurrection, any life after death. And Christ himself had answered them, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, Matthew 22 31-32. Paul has answered those who denied the resurrection of the body, by the resurrection of Christ, whose body was raised up. Now the question is, how can a body that dies, be raised up again and be the same? Paul says that we learn from nature that the bodies are not identical, they are the same, but not identical. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die, 
1 Corinthians 15 36. The answer to the first question, the how. He says in effect, if you only had sense enough to see it, you would see that, in a seed which is planted, there is dissolution and continuity, a seed that is planted will produce seeds, which are essentially the same as that seed. But the seed itself has died and disintegrated, so that the seed it produces is not the very seed that died. It is like that seed, but it is not the same seed. In the seed that is planted, there is a disintegration and yet there is a continuity. It is a mystery, but it is not an impossibility. What is death? Death is a separation. It is not the ending of the spirit or of the personality. These do not die. The real you goes on to be with the Lord, if you are a child of God. It is the body that disintegrates. Death is a separation of the body from the individual, from the person. The body disintegrates, decays, decomposes. Dust to dust and ashes to ashes, applies only to the body. Paul now answers the second question, what body is raised up? And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat, or of some other grain, 1 Corinthians 15 37. The sowing of grain is the illustration. Christ is the first fruits, then will be coming along later. We are waiting for the rapture of the church, when Christ takes the believers out of the world. If at the time of the rapture we are already dead, we will be raised up. If we are still alive at the time of the rapture, we'll be caught up and changed. The seed, you see, does not provide itself with a new body, neither does the sower, but God provides it. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body, 1 Corinthians 15 38. Then Paul moves into another area. All of this is the mystery of life. Actually the mystery of life is greater than the mystery of death. When you sow wheat, wheat comes up, not barley or corn. That little grain that forms on the stalk is like the one you sowed, not identical, but certainly very similar. Now he moves from the area of botany to zoology. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds, 1 Corinthians 15 39. The difference between a dead body and the resurrection body, is greater than the difference between men and beasts, fish and birds. Paul says that all flesh is not the same flesh. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory, 1 Corinthians 15 40-41. Now he has moved into the realm of astronomy, and says that all the bodies of the solar system are not the same. The sun is not the same material as the moon, neither is it the same as the stars. The stars differ from each other. There is a solar system, a stellar system, planets, and suns so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption, 1 Corinthians 15 42. You see, the body that was given Adam was always subject to death. Although he would not have died if he had not sinned, his body would have been subject to death. However, by resurrection we get a body that is incorruptible. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power, 1 Corinthians 15:43. We will get glory and color and beauty and power, all of these things, with the new body. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body, 1 Corinthians 15:44. Many years ago in the city of New York, in fact, it was way back in the day when liberalism was called modernism, back in the 1920s, they had an argument about whether resurrection was spiritual. The liberal even today claims it's spiritual. He doesn't believe in bodily resurrection at all. A very famous Greek scholar from the University of Chicago read a paper, on the passage from this verse. His paper put the emphasis on the word spiritual. He concluded by saying, Now, brethren, you can see that resurrection is spiritual because it says it's spiritual. The liberals all applauded, and somebody made a motion that they print that manuscript and circulate it. Well, 
A very fine Greek scholar was there, and he stood up, and when he stood up all the liberals were a little uneasy. He could ask very embarrassing questions. He said, I'd like to ask the author of the paper a question. Very reluctantly, the good doctor stood up. Now, doctor, which is stronger, a noun or an adjective? A very simple question, but I'd like for you to answer it. He could see the direction he was going, and didn't want to answer it, but he had to. Well, he said, a noun is stronger, of course. Now doctor, I'm amazed that you presented the paper that you did today. You put the emphasis upon an adjective, and the strong word is the noun. Now let's look at that again. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. He said, the only thing that is carried over in resurrection is the body. It's one kind of body when it dies, a natural body. It's raised a body, but a spiritual body, dominated now by the spirit, but it's still a body. And, you know, they never did publish that paper. They decided it would be better not to publish it. May I say to you, just a simple little exercise in grammar, answer this great professor's whole manuscript, and his entire argument which he presented at that time. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, 1 Corinthians 15:45. You see, the first man, Adam, was, psychical Sukin, and, Zuzan, in the Greek. That means he was physical and psychological. The last Adam, Christ, is spiritual, pneuma or pneumatical, if you want the English equivalent. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven, 1 Corinthians 15 46-47. The first man is of the earth and is earthy, quikos, meaning clay, rubbish if you please. There is so much talk of ecology today. Who messed up this earth anyway? Man. Because man is earthy. Everything that is the refuse of man is rubbish. He is that kind of creature. He fills the garbage cans. But the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption, 1 Corinthians 15 48-50. We are all earthy, we are from Adam and that is our condition, but we are also in Christ, we are joined to Him, and therefore we have a hope, the hope of the resurrection in an eternal body which will forever be with Christ. Today we bear the image of the earthy, but we look forward to the day when we will bear the image of the heavenly. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Our old bodies are not going to heaven, I'm glad of that, I would like to trade mine in. God is not going to send these bodies into a repair shop. Corruption cannot inherit in corruption. This body must be put into the ground, like a seed. It will come up a new body, a new tabernacle for us to live in. It will not be identical to the old body, and yet it will be like the old body. Out here on the west coast, there are many atheists, who have their ashes scattered out over the Pacific Ocean after they die. In other words, they challenge God to try to put all of those atoms together again. Our bodies are made up of a few chemicals. Most of the body's composition is water, hydrogen, and oxygen, with other atoms thrown in with it. Do you think that God cannot bring those atoms together? Or maybe He wants to use other atoms. After all, hydrogen atoms are all very much alike. It wouldn't make any difference to me, if He used other atoms to make my new body. What nonsense to discount the resurrection because of this. Yet one of the foremost arguments against the possibility of resurrection, is that God would not be able to regather all those atoms. My friend, since He made the body to begin with, he certainly can make another like it. He is God, isn't he? God will get your body together again, whether it comes out of the grave or its ashes are scattered out there in the ocean. The first heresy in the church was the denial of the bodily resurrection. We see how Paul has shown the truth of the resurrection. He has spoken against the three major philosophies of his day. Stoicism said the soul merged into deity at death, 
and there was a destruction of personality. Paul says our bodies shall rise. Epicureanism said there was no existence beyond death. Paul says Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and our bodies, too, shall rise. Platonism believed in the immortality of the soul, but denied the bodily resurrection. Paul says that our physical bodies shall be made alive as spiritual bodies.